Hi everyone, Jillian Pocalo here reporting to you live from my studio in Phoenixville to wherever your studio is, wherever you are. Um, and I wanted to show you today how I use Speedball's products to create my own um, silk screens. And I use um, all of the, the products that you see here are really readily available. So um, to start, you're gonna need a silk screen. This is one that's sized to be uh, 10 by 14, which will fit one eight and a half by 11 really easily on it. You want a, um, a transparency. And so let me just show you what I got here. It's a black and white transparency of one of my photographs. Um, so it's a strong black and white image that's really graphic. Um, gray tones don't work really well for this process unless you're adding multiple screens. Um, and I've got my photo emulsion kit um, that comes with these three things. So inside the box there is the photo emulsion and the sensitizer and the emulsion remover. Now the photo emulsion and the sensitizer, these two are BFFs. They play together really well. You need them both to go together. So um, what you're going to do is this is like an acrylic binder um, and it comes in a beautiful blue color. This is a sensitizer. This is the light sensitive agent that actually makes this process work. Um, so what you'll do is you'll fill this about halfway with cold water, shake it up really well, dump it in here. And so you got this like sort of yellow ochre color then mixes with a beautiful blue to turn into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Green. And the reason it comes separately is because um, once these two are mixed together, this has a shelf life of about six months in the refrigerator or three month, or three weeks um, outside of the refrigerator, like on your shelf in your studio. So it's really important that you um, mark for your, well, what I do in my studio is I will mark the date that I mixed it so that that way I can keep track of when I mixed an emulsion um, so that it stays nice for when I need it. All right, so that's what comes in the box. Also, because all mistakes are fixable, it comes with the emulsion remover, and I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute. The other thing that's really nice about what comes in the kit, this kit for those of you who are just joining, is that it comes with a really very comprehensive list of instructions with pictures that are going to show you exactly what I'm going to show you today. So you're probably not going to um, run into too many problems. All right, so that's what I got. Um, I also have my light kit back here, um, and this I'll explain in a minute, but this is going to be what I use to expose my screen. Um, so if you look around my studio, what I have up on the walls are test prints of all of the screens that I've burned. I keep all of my screens, um, I keep all of my screen mesh, and that's why I really like the Speedball um, screens, because there's the mesh on the surface, and then there's this plastic cord that runs around the edge of the wood, I don't know if you can see it, but that can pop out, and then you can pop another mesh on. So I keep all of my screens in a flat file, and ready to use at any point. So, um, but different artists are different, right? So you're gonna figure out a system that works best for you. So, um, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna coat my screen using my mixed up uh, photo emulsion. And so what I'm gonna do is I am gonna dump some of this into an emulsion coater right? So it's that beautiful Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle green. I'm going to pour out a little more than I'm going to probably need, but it's better to have and not need than need and not have, right? So what I'm going to do is, let me just move this down a little bit more so you can see. I'm going to tip the emulsion forward. Um, first of all, so with the coater, there's this hexagonal edge that's actually gonna to be touching the screen. So you're gonna tip this further than you think you're gonna to need to, but let me show you. So you're gonna tip this all the way forward and let the emulsion go across this, the bottom of the screen. And then you're gonna pull up. And when I get to the top, I'm gonna to rock this back so that the emulsion goes back into the screen or back into the trough a little bit. 
and I'm gonna kind of shimmy shimmy. Your natural instinct, by the way, is gonna to be to pull this away right away. And then you're gonna wind up with all these drips that you have to clean up. So this is why I say like, shimmy shimmy. It makes a difference. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the back. I'm gonna tip that all the way forward until the emulsion goes across the bottom of the screen. And then I'm gonna pull it up, rock it back, let the emulsion go back into that trough shimmy shimmy and then I'm gonna pull away the goal here is to have a nice even lightweight coat on both sides of the screen if you got a little bit messy or if it got a little bit too much too thick you can always do a cleanup pass where you're not coating the screen you're just kind of pulling some of that extra emulsion off of the screen and like that all right so that's that's pretty good now the beauty of the diazo photo emulsion um, that Speedball has is that it's kind of got a slow exposure time, which is working to my advantage right now, right? Like I'm able to talk to you and technically it's exposing in the ambient light that's coming through my window, that's coming down from the lamp, but it's not so fast that I need to run and throw this into a dark closet, although that's what I'm going to do now. Let's pretend we waited for about 15 to 20 minutes for this to dry. And here it is, it's dry. So um, once it's dry to the touch, you can technically start exposing it. Some people say you wanna wait overnight. I get really impatient. I go ahead and I expose it as soon as this stuff is dry. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my transparency and I'm gonna put it emulsion to emulsion on the screen. So that means that the printed side of the transparency, or if you drew on your transparency, it's gonna be the drawn side. You're gonna have that facing down. Let's talk transparencies in a minute after I get this settled, okay? So um, you wanna, if you can feel the texture of the ink or if you can see it kind of matte, that's gonna be the side that was printed on. And emulsion to emulsion means that it's gonna be touching like that. Now, word to the wise, when I'm talking about um, my screen, I'll usually talk about it like drum side or dish side, and you wanna be facing drum side up because you wanna have a nice, you know, really uh, tight lock with this. Like you want it to be really touching. Okay, now I'm gonna tape it down and you don't have to go nuts with tape. Um, just the corners is fine, but here's a little helpful hint. When you put the tape on, your natural instinct is gonna to be to kind of jam it down there and press the screen and I don't know if you can see but like when I did that the screen kind of bounced a little bit you want this to be as flat as possible so I like to say like be like a mosquito on the surface of the screen so you don't actually make a divot there so you can have a nice flat surface I know some artists will um, put a piece of sheet glass on top for their exposure which hey if that works for you that's great um, the thing to keep in mind is that a lot of glass, especially from frame shops now, is UV protected and that can affect your exposure. So if you're just doing it like this, it works. If you have a piece of glass and you want to put it down to make a really nice seal, you can, um, but just make sure that it's not UV coated. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it right over to my exposure unit. Um, so. What I've got for my exposure unit is a piece of black velvet. You can use black paper, but black absorbs light. So what'll happen is if I didn't have that there, light would bounce off of whatever surface is below and back onto the back of the screen and it'll kind of um, cook the screen on both sides and then it won't work. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my black fabric, I have my Speedball light kit, and um, I'll tell you what goes on inside of it. Uh, as soon as I plug this baby in. All right, so inside my light box, I have, it burns really, really bright. Um, and it burns really, really hot. So you've got your lamp and you, it comes, the kit comes with a special bulb, which is a BBA number one photo flood bulb. Um, this has a three hour lifespan. Um, and these you can buy separately at your local art supplier. Um, they uh, burn really, really hot. 
turns out, oh, hold on, I need to set my timer. So when you're doing your exposure, you're gonna do it for um, about 17, 18 minutes in this strategy. So I've got my light that's about 17 inches away from my screen. Um, and I'm gonna set my timer for 17 minutes because I was yammering on. Normally I'd set it for about 18 minutes. Um, there are a ton of, well, let me explain this way first. So the BBA number one photo flood bulb um, is gonna burn really bright, really hot for about three hours. My exposure is only gonna take 17 minutes, um, but um, so yeah, so there's that. You can also use a an incandescent bulb, like a 150 watt bulb, um, and then your exposure time is gonna be more like an hour and a half. Um, you can also use the natural sunlight too. The thing is that, you know, it depends on where you are relative to the equator, um, what, uh, you know, what time of year it is, what time of day it is, um, is it a cloudy day? Is it a, is it a rainy day? Well, I wouldn't do it in a rainy day, but anyway. Um, so like all of that's gonna factor into how much your exposure is gonna be. What I like about this is somebody figured out the math so I don't have to. It's always gonna be about 17 minutes, especially if it's about 17 inches away from the screen. So that's a really nice thing. You can also burn screens on a professional um, exposure unit if you have one. So that's, that's always an option. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do while I let that sit, is I guess I wanna just, just, just show you how I use screen printing in some of my work. Um, you know what, I'm seeing a question about a halogen bulb, and I've never tried one, but I think one of my former students told me that it was about a five minute time period for the halogen bulb. Oh, can I just do a little safety thing? So this bulb burns really hot, and um, the oils in your hand can actually make bulbs explode. Turns out you've never been supposed to change a bulb with your bare hands. Did you know that? I learned that. So um, when you change a bulb, you always want to make sure that you are covering your hand or putting a glove on so that the oils of your hand are not directly touching the glass. Um, so let me show you a couple of ways that, um, that I sometimes do it. Um, so what I'll do is, this is one of my pieces. Um, I start with a background painting and then I layer my photo silk screen on top of that and I'll usually paint back in. So I'm almost thinking of silk screen for myself as um, like, you know how you use different paint brushes for different kinds of marks? That's sort of how I see screen printing for my own work. Um, I, this is three different screens that I put side by side to create this narrative of this piece. Um, but what's great about screen printing is it is so versatile. It's not just one single color on a t-shirt. You can kind of go crazy with it. So, and it, it plays very well with others. So of course you can print on paper. Um, in the case of this one, I, um, I did a painting um, of plants from my backyard and then layered the photo silk screen on top and then I painted back into it using um, some watercolors. Uh, I did a similar process here where I'm doing a, an acrylic pour and then using the acrylic glazes to build up layers. Um, you can use it with encaustics. If anybody is an encaustic person, um, you can use the fabric inks because they are heat resistant uh, or, you know, like they, they work well with heat. You can use the um, fabric inks and do like the black line work in this was, was a silk screen and then I layered the um, encaustic paints on top of that. Um, of course, you can print on fabric. And um, if you print on fabric, you're gonna to wanna to heat set it using a hot iron for about a minute, um, just so that it stays permanently. And you're gonna to need to, oh, I'll talk about inks in a minute. Um, and then this is a print on uh, ceramic. So, you know, you can print on greenware 
and then um, do glazes and all of that stuff on top of it. So what I love about screen printing it is, is it is so versatile and I can use the exact same stencil for all of those different materials. If it can be flat at any point in its life, you can do it. Um, and you can do all kinds of different transfer techniques with screen printing. Uh, on, like you can print on newsprint and transfer it onto the clay. You can also print directly onto the clay. Like all of that is a possibility. Um, and that's a that's another demo for another day. Um, so while we're waiting for my screen to burn, let's see. I have how much time do I have? I have 11 minutes and 29 seconds until that sucker is ready to come out of the light. So I might as well show you how I screen print. Okay. So let's talk inks. Um, there are two kinds of inks. There is fabric ink and there is the new professional inks. These are really, really lovely. That's what I'm going to use to print on my panel. And there is acrylic ink. So the difference between these is like you won't feel the difference when you're printing with them. Um, I love the way that the viscosity of the speedball inks, um, but the acrylic inks can be on paper or um, wood, but if you print on fabric with these, um, eventually it's gonna wash out. Whereas with the acrylic, with the fabric inks, you can print on paper, fabric, wood, whatever, but if you print on fabric, then it's gonna stay in the fabric um, with some heat setting. All right, so I'm gonna set my screen up. Um, this is a screen that I burned just a couple of days ago. Um, and so what I'll do is if I wanna make a really nice clean print, I will tape all around this. so that that way I don't get any weird ink blots in places that I don't want. And you'll be able to see in a moment when I print this, just how much detail you can get with this. Um, I guess here's, here's a good time when I can tell you about different mesh. So the kind that, the mesh that comes in the speedball screens is about 110 um, threads, 110 threads per inch which means that it's good for printing on pretty much anything you could possibly need. Um, the higher the thread count, the more um, photo detail you can get. So if you're doing, um, if you're, you're having a dot matrix and you're trying to get continuous tone stuff, you're probably gonna wanna aim for a higher thread count. If you're going for um, textile, if you're printing on textiles because you need more ink to be deposited on the fabric, you're gonna wanna have a slightly lower thread count. So what's nice is the 110 is kind of the medium ground, so it's, it's like equalizes the playing field and it works for pretty much any purpose you could possibly have. Um, especially if you're printing on clay too, you're gonna wanna have um, a, a, a lower thread count. Um, which means less threads per inch, which means that the threads are a little bit more open like this and can let bigger particles through the screen. So I'm going to use my Speedball Professional Poster Ink. This stuff is really nice. And I'm going to use a skier spoon and I'm going to just scoop out what I like to say is as much Nutella as you would put on your bread. If you're a Nutella fan, and you're a bread fan. If you're not that much, you want that much. Okay. <laughs> and um, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my squeegee, I'm gonna hold it at a 45 degree angle, and I'm gonna pull towards me. Now, squeegees come in all different shapes and sizes. I grabbed my six incher. I'm gonna use my six incher, but um, you can, you know, uh, you can use one that fits the screen perfectly. I'm gonna just pull that across the screen. You can go back and forth a little, not a big deal. Ideally, you want it to just be a nice clean print. 
And voila. So, um, the next, oh, so there's one cardinal rule about screen printing, I think, and that is whatever you do, whatever you're printing on, don't let the ink dry on the screen because once the ink is dry on there, that screen is no more. So what I sometimes will do is I'll just spray it down with water until I'm able to wash it out fully um, or I'll, I'll try and wipe it up as I go. So printing on something like panel, also a possibility. I did like a little acrylic pour jobby over here. And so because this is a way smaller panel than my big screen, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna line it up. I taped it off. Let me show you. I saw a question up there. What is the difference between a squeegee with a rounder edge versus straight? Um, versatility. So a rounder edge is going to give you more of an ink deposit, especially when it comes to something like fabric, whereas this um, is, is more for flat stuff like paper um, or panel or something like that. Truthfully, I use the same for both. And I like the softer durometer because I like that it can kind of give with me. Um, but that's really all there is. I mean, the nice thing about screen printing, like most art supplies, is there are many options because all different artists have different ways of working, right? So I'm going to line this up. And I taped off my edges. And I'm going to do the exact same thing that I just did with my other screen. I'm just going to run a nice glop up at the top. Because the ink is, um, because I have the tape here, it's blocked the ink, right? So it's not gonna go through in those sp spots where I've taped. Fun fact, you can also use that to your advantage if you want. So you can tape off different areas and create like different paper stencils or, um, you know, using the same photo based stuff. I'm gonna be doing another workshop next week uh, or two weeks from now where I talk about silkscreen mono prints. And so save those thoughts for that time because that's a really fun thing you can do with screen. Okay, so I'm gonna pull my squeegee across the screen. And of course it's stuck to the back. So there we go. Now the nice thing about the poster inks is they have a a sheen that's going to kind of settle into the paper, the panel a little bit. Um, but what's really nice is that the, the poster inks are non-scuffable. So what that means in terms of me in my studio that is super clean and very well organized, as you can see, is that when I have a piece like this on the bottom of a pile, that ink's not going to just come right off. Um, so that's kind of one of the nice features of the, of the new poster inks. Again, they're only used for, um, used for paper or panel or something that's not going to get washed. So I would not use those. I would not use this on, um, something that's going to be worn, but that's that. Um, so let's see, how much time do we have until my screen is done? <laughs> Three minutes and 14 seconds. It's exciting. Um, so, I want you to be able to see that because I think that that's going to be really interesting. And there's a little bit of a trick to it. Um, but let's see if there's anything that I've forgotten. Okay, so one thing that some artists will deal with um, is some artists like to reclaim their screens after they're finished using them. Like you've printed that edition, you're never gonna wanna look at that screen again. You just printed 800 of them. Please don't let me ever see that screen again. So then what you're gonna do is if you want, you can either do the, my method, which is pop the mesh off and store it for the next time you ever decide that you wanna see it for another 800 piece edition, or you can reclaim your screen. So in the photo emulsion kit, I told you about the emulsion remover. 
And so the way this stuff works is um, you're going to start with a dry screen and it's really important that you start with a dry screen and not a um, and not a wet screen because then it makes it permanent. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to start with a dry screen and a dry brush that's only put in this and then you're going to paint both sides of your screen um, until you see the emulsion actually start to dissolve and you'll see it dissolve if it's going the way that you need it to. Um, so you'll see it dissolve and then once it's almost all the way dissolved then you can um, then you can rinse your screen and it's going to wipe the stencil away and then you can recoat it and you can re-expose it and do the same thing over and over again. The nice thing is that the mesh doesn't go bad unless you stick like a pair of scissors on it, which hopefully you wouldn't want to do, right? Um, so how did I get into screen printing? I came to screen printing because I um, have always integrated my photography in with my artwork. And so um, I started by doing like the antiquated photo processes like Van Dyke Brown, Cyanotype, um, gum by chromate and all of this other stuff that's really awesome but super toxic and my studio has always been in my home so I start I came to screen printing um, from that avenue of how can I incorporate my photographs onto the surface of panels and paintings and all of that stuff so that's really where my work is now um, so for instance like this is um, a photograph that I took in uh, the, the Rust Belt in Pennsylvania. Um, of, I'm fascinated by abandoned houses and, um, and buildings and like the stories that they tell and, and creating a story about a place based on that. So I took the photograph and developed it as a photo silk screen. And then this is a bridge that's over in that area, um, uh, the, the same Rust Belt area that was made um, by the people you know, who lived in these kinds of houses. And so it's like my, my work is telling a narrative of a certain place. Um, so that's, that's that. All right. I love screen printing. It's my, it's my favorite thing to do actually. And so I can take you on a really quick tour of my studio. Um, if you can kind of look around me, you can see that there are test prints from wherever I've gone. Um, I do, you know, a, I, I am located in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, um, and so, and that's where this little studio of mine is, um, and, uh, so a lot of my work is based on images from Pennsylvania, but some of my work is also based on places I've gone, so there's places like, um, Iceland and Italy and wherever I go and wherever I hope to go in the future. Uh, once we're able to start moving around freely about the cabin again. Um, so let's see, how much time do we have until this thing is ready? I want you to see that. I want, to, ah, yes, all right. So there we go. My time door is working today, folks. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug my screen take it out of the light but I want you to see this piece of this so do you see how it's printing out so you see how there's this lighter area and then there's the darker area the lighter area is where the ink from the transparency was blocking the screen the, the darker area is where it basically kind of got cooked so now I'm gonna rinse out my screen and I'm gonna show you um, what to look for with this. All right, so we're gonna go on a little expedition across my house. Judgment free, please. So I'm gonna just show you <laughs> my way to my kitchen where I'm gonna rinse out all of my screens. Okay, so here we go. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I am just kind of putting a little bit of water on the screens that I printed from before so you can kind of see that, uh, so that I don't junk up those screens by 
having the ink dry on them. Uh, once the ink is out of the screen, some inks may sort of stain the screen a little bit, so don't let that freak you out. So long as you can see light passing through, you're in good shape. So like for instance, I'll show you with this one in just a second. I was letting, while I was kibitzing with you, I was letting this ink kind of hang out on the screen so you can see how there's some ink marks up here. That's not affecting my image at all. I can still see my stencil right through the screen. Let's see up here how you can still see through the screen. Okay. So now with this, you're going to want to start rinsing out your screen. Start with cold water first, and you're going to go on both sides of the screen. Um, I just use the water in my sink. Some people. Um, you know, I wouldn't honestly use a power washer for this, especially not these screens, because like the cord is going to go <laughs> blowing right out, and then <laughs> where'd your screen go? So with this, you just like it's you're developing it under cold temperature water, and you don't have to do freezing cold either. Um, like, don't make your hands hurt, right? You just want to kind of rinse it out until these lighter areas of the screen wind up turning the white of the fabric. And you're going to keep doing this, and you're going to be like, is this happening? Is this actually print? Is this going to work? And chances are, folks, yeah, it is. It's going to work. You can take a soft side of a sponge, not the scrubby side, a soft side, and kind of massage it lightly, if you so choose. What you're aiming for is for those darker areas, those lighter areas to start to develop as the, the, the white of the fabric. So this is a point where you would notice if something's gone awry, um, you would know at this point. So if my whole image just washed away, it would be a sign to me that um, it didn't get enough light or that my, maybe my exposure time was too short, maybe the light was too far away from the, the screen. Um, if, it, if nothing washes away, like if it's just all dark green and nothing's going anywhere, then that's also a sign to me that says that I um, overexposed it. And so the solution for both of those would be to just reclaim your screen and start over. So here I want to show you what I got. I got a screen that where you can see light passing through um, really clearly and where the light can pass through. Ink can also pass through. So my screen is ready for me to print once this is dry. Why wouldn't I want to print with a wet screen? Well, because then I'm going to get like ink blots all over the place. Um, so it's better to start with a dry screen. If you have a screen that's got like a couple of little tacky spots, like maybe the emulsion was a little thick and it came out and it developed, but it's kind of starting to peel up a little bit, you can stick this back out in the sun or back under the light to kind of cure it. Sometimes what I'll do is if I have a really small, like a, a tiny amount of detail or something like I really want to capture, sometimes I'll just stick it out in the sun to dry anyway. Um, so let's see back to my studio I go welcome back everyone to my wonderful studio um, so that's really all there is to this process um, I can print countless times I can reclaim my screen if I need to I can keep um, you know working into my prints if I need to um, and I welcome any questions and I uh, hope, thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, I hope I was able to answer some questions and keep printing. Happy printing. Make some stuff. All right. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.